this weekend I got a couple calls from the media asking me questions about Rick Perry, our governor here. This weekend I got a couple calls from the media asking me questions about Rick Perry, our governor here in Texas, the statements he made about possible secession. Now he didn't call for secession, but he was restating a principle that was long held, and at least in the original time of our uh, country, and that is that there was a right to secession. Uh, actually, after the Civil War, nobody believes there is a so-called right to secession, but it is a very legitimate uh, issue to debate because all the, the states that came into the Union before the Civil War believed they had a right to secede. And New England, in the early part of the 19th century, actually considered it, and nobody questioned them about whether they had the right to do it or not. Since the Civil War, uh, it's been sort of a dead issue, but he brought it up. It stirred the media, and believe me, it really stirred some of the liberal media where they started really screaming about what is going on here. Uh, this is un-American. I saw, heard one indiv individual say uh, this is treasonous to even talk about it. Well, uh, they don't know their history very well because uh, if they think about it, it's an American tradition. It's very American to talk about secession. That's how we came into being. Thirteen colonies seceded from the British and uh, established a new country. So secession is a very much of an American principle. What about all the strong endorsements we, we have given over the past decade or two of those republics that seceded from the Soviet system? We were delighted with this. We never said, oh no, secession is treasonous. No, secession is a good principle. Just think of the benefits that would have come over these last 230 some years if the principle of secession had existed, that means the federal government would always have been restrained not to overburden the states with too much federalism, too many federal rules and regulations. But since that was all wiped out with the Civil War, the states, uh, the federal government has grown by leaps and bounds, and uh, we have uh, suffered the, the, uh, the consequences. And we need to reconsider this. We should think about it. It's not un-American to think about uh, the possibility of secession. This is something that is voluntary. Uh, we came together voluntarily. A free society means you can dissolve it voluntarily. That's what the whole issue uh, was about. Just remember one of the reasons that Wilson drove us in unnecessarily into World War I. He talked about, well, we have to give uh, have every country in the world the benefit of self-determination. A good principle, of course, I don't think he really believed that, but self-determination is, is a good principle. It's a very American principle. So to me, it's a shame that we can't uh, discuss this. You know, it's interesting that uh, so many of us have been taught for so many years, and as long as I can remember from first grade on up, taking uh, the Pledge of Allegiance, that we have a republic that's indivisible. And we have been preached at and preached it. So therefore, there is no contest, no question since the Civil War that uh, uh, we have even the thought that this uh, could happen. But you know what a lot of people don't talk about and they really don't even know about is who wrote the, deck, who wrote the Pledge to the Flag. The Pledge to the Flag came from Francis Bellamy, an, a, an avowed socialist who wanted to put into concrete in, uh, in the pledge, this principle of, of being indivis indivisible. And uh, it, he did it, you know, for the celebration, ironically, 400 years of the celebration of the uh, landing of Christopher Columbus. So it was in, in 1892. I mean, the pledge for pledge of allegiance has not been here, you know, uh, all our all our history. So I I think it's it's worth a discussion. I think people should discuss this because right now the American people are sick and tired of it all, and I think the time will come when people will consider it much more seriously. Is when the federal government can no longer deliver. That time will come when the dollar collapses, no matter what they do and how many promises they have and how many bailouts they have, they can't do it if the money doesn't work. So then the independence of the states will come back and it doesn't mean that you'll be un-American to even contemplate what might have to be done once the dollar crashes. Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Friday, November 16th, 2012 and I'm Darko. You just saw that video of Rampa Secession. I'm not sure if uh, if he's talking about it all of a sudden because he's not running and he's no longer a congressman. 
but uh, the timing was kind of interesting. It's also kind of interesting the timing of uh, this about the talk of secession and stuff like that going on prior to this movie about Lincoln coming out. And I think it's going to be a propaganda piece. With uh, I mean, it's probably going to be entertaining because it has Daniel Day-Lewis, he's a great actor, but still, it's probably going to be propaganda about how it had to be done, right? All that bloodshed just so they can preserve the Union. But it says here, and that's the thing, I don't know if this is part of the plan for the powers that be, because like I've, like I've said before, I don't agree with everything that Ron Paul says. I don't know if he's a shill. But uh, for whatever it's worth, you know, the, the colonies were basically, what, it was an extension of the crown, and when they were rebelling, they were really just creating a new company, a new, new corporation, uh, just, you know, uh, wiping the slate clean as far as debt slaves go. So they never really left it, and the king wanted the revolution right and probably help fund it so i mean if they start seceding and a and revolution breaks out it's probably going to be all planned prior to that right so it says here that obama supporters call for secessionists to be deported leftists want to characterize secession as a thought crime daily caller investigation found that the kind of people filing the petitions are marine veterans parents mechanics and businessmen the viral stampede for secession has now reach as a crescendo with all 50 states filing petitions. Actually, I signed mine uh, uh, for uh, my state as well just recently. We're at like 20,000, I think. Leftist control freaks are attempting to turn the call for states to succeed from the union into a thought crime by asking the government to have its advocates stripped of their citizenship, deported, and exiled. Next up, petition to impeach Obama gets 27,000 votes. So the petition to impeach uh, Mr. Obama, for repeatedly violating the Constitution, has surpassed the required number of signatures to mandate an official White House response. Next up, TSA puts controversial scanners in storage, so more good news. It says here that uh, the TSA has put 91 of its full-body scanning machines, $14 million in storage because of privacy concerns. Also, what about the health concerns, right? You're getting radiated. And it reminded me of this story. I don't have time to post the video, and it'll probably be infringing on copyrights. So I'll post the link, and you can go in there and check this out. But again, I don't know, understand what the logic is with people. It's the same mentality with these towers. Arizona residents angered by ugly cell towers. So they're not cons so they're required by law to, to have enough coverage, right? So they have to put up all they have to put up these towers. So they're 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 complaining about these uh, these towers being ugly and how they're trying to disguise them with uh, palm trees, uh, but the, all of these people's concerns are not about the health effects. They're about aesthetic reasons. Oh, they're ugly. So people need to wake up to that, man. It's not just about privacy. It's about health. Right gears up for Papa John's Appreciation Day. So anti Obamacare event inspired by support for Chick Fil A. It goes on here and it says that the CEO of Papa John's uh, has received intense media scrutiny in addition to being demonized as an evil rich guy by the left. So this is just like uh, the Chick-fil-A where they, you know, they originally came out and just made their stance and all of a sudden they got attacked, right, by these zombies, by these uh, uh, social engineering zombies that push this um, uh, social agenda which is going to um, basically uh, corrupt and demoralize our society, break it down until it's nothing, right? So they can't just let these individual companies, um, you know, have some kind of stance. And he's saying, well, you know, um, you know, this, I'm going to have to pay for this. So he's talking about cutting hours, basically passing on uh, the cost of Obamacare that forces you to get insurance, private insurance, onto the consumer. And it's also happening at Denny's, too. An overlooked key to Obama victory is gay voters. They favored the president three to one, says New York Times. Just like I mentioned before, it was gay voters, it was females, feminists, uh, blacks, guilty whites, whites feel, who uh, feel guilty of being white, and the whole LGBT community. So a Christian housing worker demoted for his opposition to gay marriage wins legal battle to get his job back, but just 100 pounds in damages. So he said on Facebook that gay weddings were... Uh, inequality too far. So after that, he lost his managerial position and had a salary cut by 40%. But like I said, these are the same people that uh, preach tolerance, right? Uh, passengers left stranded on bus after a driver refuses to board because of gay rights advertising on the side. Passengers spent 20 minutes, it says, uh, stranded on a bus after the driver refused to board because of a gay rights message on the side. Some people are gay. Get over it. So nice little uh, pentagram or star 
Actually, it's a baffle me. If you look at the horns and that, and the ears, Stonewall. These people just, they don't get it, right? So, so somebody, I guess a local in the UK said, I don't know where these things are coming from, but they're all over. And uh, it says it's a billboard for a gay lobby group. Well, someone was shouting at the driver, you can't do that, it's disgusting. This happened during a changeover when the old bus driver left and a new one came in. And also they said, I thought it was disgusting. I, I would never say, I'm not getting on your bus because you believe in God and I don't. So he goes, does he seriously think he's never had a gay person on his bus before? He says, I think it's wrong that he can cause a fuss while people are trying to go places. So tolerance goes both ways. That's what I'm sick of, of hearing. I'm sick of having this crap, the social engineering shoved down my throat. I'm sure other people are. And uh, what is their excuse when, when it's about tolerance, right? If they're unwilling to, perhaps they should look for another job, right? Like I said, it makes sense because being straight is no longer normal students are taught. UN agencies ask Brazilian president to criminalize homophobia. So this is the same place that has state-funded uh, sex change operations and, and, and everything else. The expanded uh, whatever group, HIV AIDS in Brazil, and joint, see that's that's called reproductive health, and joint, is, uh, we also call it eugenics, and joint partnership with national international eugenics groups sent a letter to the Brazilian president and other blah, 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 requesting priority be given to efforts to criminalize homophobia. Yeah, and that's the thing. Down in South America, they actually go on the embassy sites, the CIA or whatever, the State Department's websites, and they'll tell the people, be careful when you go down to South America because uh, they're more, quote, traditional. And you shouldn't be out holding hands out in public. But see, instead of people instead of people uh, going down there and saying, well, you know, I respect that. That's their culture, you know. Uh, and then they say, no, they have to be like us. They have to accept us. It says 92% of Brazilian population recognizes that there is a strong prejudice against uh, homosexuality it says in a study uh, tested they uh, basically asked people to comment on statements such as God made men and women with different sexes so that they could fulfill their role and have children 92% of Brazilians who agreed partially or completely with the statement were labeled homophobic so yeah pretty interesting so they deem they determined that 99% of the citizens were homophobic and that the uh, regime is now receiving international support of course by the globalists uh, to advance its stalled anti-homophobia bills and measures. Whew. Lesbian teen faked anti-gay notes that sparked college's solidarity rally. So a lesbian student at Central Connecticut University won the sympathy of hundreds of students who rallied due to her defense against anti-gay remarks before police say the video evidence forced her to admit she planted the message herself. So this is just like Holocaust pushers. Uh, this is just like all the people in the LGBT uh, t uh, and bullying, anti-bullying, it ends up being a, a, a farce. So you have a politician saying having babies stops women from being equal to men. Says that former uh, minister claims mediocre men can climb the career ladder with while mothers take time off work. Yeah, it says here that uh, childbirth was a barrier to women's career success. So actually, they're, what they're trying, I think they're surrounding something that they're trying to push, which is to force companies to hire so many females uh, for, as far as ratios to men. Remember this, CDC says U.S. birth rate hits all-time low, 40% of babies born to unmarried women. Because the banks and the military industrial complex have basically pillaged your future, they say raising Social Security ages is a cruel idea, says one person, Paul Krugman, in the New York Times. But they're pushing for it out in the UK, too. People will need to work longer after pension changes, says Minister. Remember this guy, Lord Bitchard, says here that retired people could work for pensions. They encourage to do community work, such as caring for the very old or facing losing some of their pensions. So you got to work for your pension after you retire. Hidden danger of the recession, more Britons are being scalded in hot water bottle accidents because they don't want to turn on the heat. Suffering from burns because families are using hot water bottles to save on energy bills. It's written in the past two years. Why petrol costs means it's not worth getting a job. High prices making work uneconomical. The travel costs to work... Uh, reduce the extra income gain from getting a job by 40% for the low-income worker. The worst economic numbers in more than a year for the U.S., leading world economies to struggle into 2014, says Moody's. Another Spaniard facing eviction kills himself, a third one in less than a month. So 50 million Americans are struggling to survive. Government spells, spends billions on F-35. Greenspan says recession is a small price to pay to fix the debt. But he also said, what, in 2008? I was wrong about the economy. Sorry about that. Ikea, sorry for using forced labor. 
back. The UN says climate report will shock nations into action, while Al Gore says, let's do a carbon tax to fix the fiscal cliff. Thank you.